Hey guys, it's Mike and Maddie. Today we're comparing four very powerful note-taking programs. Notion, Obsidian, Rome Research, and RemNote. Yeah, there's been a surge of interest revolving these apps, and you might be wondering which one is right for you. And full disclosure, we do work with RemNote, but this video is not sponsored, and our goal here is just to lay out all the facts so that you can decide for yourself. On the surface, they're all amazing tools with a lot of overlap and functionality. But in order to understand their differences, I think it's helpful to talk about two very different reasons why people might use them as note-taking tools. The first type of note-taking is for productivity. So this includes things like project management, life management, um, studying, and reinforcing what you know. The second type of note-taking is for personal knowledge management. You're constantly adding to what you know, linking present and past ideas to form new ideas, and building your so-called second brain in digital form. This difference is important to understand because apps like Notion, Evernote, and OneNote are great productivity tools, but it's difficult to compare them to Obsidian, or Rome Research, or RemNote, which all excel at personal knowledge management. But just because one app is great in one category doesn't mean that it can't be great in the other. In fact, you'll see that some of these apps actually excel in both categories. And as we go along, we'll try to keep that distinction in mind. So here's a breakdown of our analysis, and you can find timestamps here or in the description below. We'll start by talking about key productivity features and which apps are capable of each feature. Then we'll talk about the relational linking features that make a good knowledge management tool and again, which apps are capable of each feature. Then we'll talk about how accessible each app is, and this includes data storage, pricing, and API. And finally, we'll wrap up by talking about the unique strengths of each app and what sets it apart from the rest. Let's talk about the productivity potential of these note-taking apps in relation to each other. Here is a table summarizing some of the key features and which apps are capable of each. So this is where we begin to see the differences. You can see that Notion has many of these features, which makes it a better app for productivity compared to Obsidian. That's not to say that you can't be productive with Obsidian, but let's go through some of these features to show you what we mean. First is the mobile app. Only Notion has a mobile app at the moment, but the other three programs have plans to develop one in the future. Obviously, having a mobile app lends itself to increased productivity, as you can easily access your notes on the go. Collaboration here refers to the capability of allowing multiple users to edit the same document simultaneously and smoothly. Rome has an early collaboration feature, but at this point, it's still experimental. Notion enables both personal and shared documents, and even allows you to download templates for more streamlined workflow. Outliner features allow you to edit text in blocks, and unfortunately, this is not supported in Obsidian. This is because Obsidian uses plain text, much like what you see in Notepad. So, for example, Obsidian doesn't have the ability to use toggled bullet points to tuck away information. This means that if you take lengthy notes, you'll have to scroll through walls of text and can't collapse certain points to clear up your workspace. Now, Rome Research and RemNote take outliner features further by allowing you to expand your view of an idea into a new document by clicking on the bullet point. So the last category is studying. Now, all note-taking apps are great study tools, but it's important to understand that some are much better for studying than others. And this comes down to evidence-based learning, because we know that active recall and spaced repetition are two of the best scientifically proven study strategies. You can't really implement these strategies easily using Obsidian. You can achieve active recall learning efficiently using Notion, Rome, and RemNote because they all have the ability to toggle bullets. So if you have questions, you can hide the answers and practice recalling the information. But RemNote is the only app here that also utilizes space repetition. RemNote can automatically convert your notes into flashcards with built-in space repetition software like Anki. These flashcards are also customizable with multi-line, lists, close options, and can be studied both forwards and backwards. So what makes a note-taking app great for personal knowledge management is its ability for relational linking. Here's a chart of some key linking features and which programs are capable of each. 
Now the tables have turned, and you can see that Notion doesn't stress knowledge management because it doesn't have any of these relational linking features. But as we mentioned before, this is where Obsidian, Roam, and Remnote really shine. So let's go through these features. First is bi-directional linking or backlinking. It seems that these two terms have been used interchangeably, but basically they refer to how you can jump back and forth between ideas using references and tags. Backlinking also allows you to take a page or document and link it to all other similar pages in your notes, keeping your thoughts interconnected. The biggest difference among these three apps comes down to what exactly can be linked. While Roam Research and Remnote can both link blocks of text, Obsidian can only link basic headers. But this is a separate discussion of its own, maybe for another time. Reference embedding allows you to pull prior notes into your current document, and any edits you make will be updated in both locations. Roam achieves this with its sidebar editor, and Remnote does this through its use of portals. The sidebars allow you to edit multiple documents simultaneously, further encouraging you to link your ideas. Roam sidebar has the most functionality, allowing you to embed, filter, and queue your ideas. And finally, the graph view allows you to visualize your knowledge and see how all your ideas and documents are linked together. And this can show you what your metaphorical second brain could look like. Obsidian and Roam both have graph views, but in our opinion, Obsidian's graph is more visually appealing as it has more dimensions and is more interactive. Next, let's talk about accessibility, and we'll go ahead and throw up the pricing for each of these apps in this section. Notion is by far the most accessible of the four. It's free for personal use, it's the only one with a dedicated mobile app and syncing of data between devices, and its greatest accessibility feature for collaborative use is the ability to import data from a variety of different mainstream platforms like Google Docs, Dropbox, and Microsoft Office, just to name a few. API access is not currently available, but will be coming soon for personal pro membership. Obsidian is free for personal use with the option to upgrade for more features. It also utilizes your local storage, which means offline access is always available. However, the lack of a mobile app at this time means that it will be restricted to your computer unless you download a third-party program to view markdown files, and API access is included. Remnote is also free and promises to always have a free version available into the future. There is no mobile or desktop app, so similarly, it will be restricted to your internet or browser. You can import from Dynalist, Workflowy, or Markdown, and API access is available. Roam Research is the only app with no free version. It'll cost you $15 a month, or if you're a true believer, you can pay $500 for a five-year membership. It also has discounted versions for select users and also has financial aid for those who qualify. Roam also does not have a mobile or desktop app, so using it will require internet. API access is also not yet available and import features include JSON and Markdown. In this last section, we wanna focus on each app individually. We'll highlight their key features that make them unique from each other. Well, as you saw from the charts earlier, Notion was not built for personal knowledge management as it lacks the relational linking features, but it does excel at productivity. It's the best for project management and it also has the best collaborative features even across platforms. Notion has the most variety of note design. You can create notes in tables, graphs, calendars, all great for group work. Notion also has a trash bin and allows you to recover old page histories if you need to backtrack. But the feature that really stands out is being able to download templates to even further your collaboration. So as for the other three apps, in our opinion, they're all amazing tools for building a personal knowledge management system, but they each shine in their own way. Obsidian is the more personal and portable option. You own your data and are responsible for finding your own storage and you have access to various plugins to customize your note-taking experience. Roam Research allows for frictionless note-taking. It has a simple interface, which means you won't be wasting a lot of time trying to organize your notes and make them look pretty. You just get your ideas down and eventually they'll just link together as you continue working. And this is why researchers and creatives love this app because it makes it so easy to just sit down and start writing. Remnote was built for students and long-term learning. It's the only app that enables effective studying with both active recall and space repetition. 
And since it automatically generates flashcards during the note-taking process, it removes the time-consuming step that students normally have to take in transcribing their class notes into their own flashcards. So those are our thoughts, but don't let your research end here. Check out these apps for yourself to get a feel for their learning curves, and definitely visit each of their individual online communities, chat with other users, ask about tutorials, feedback, plugins, and just to get an overall sense of how supportive the community can be for you. Okay guys, what are your thoughts? What do you feel are the main strengths and weaknesses of each program? Which one did you ultimately decide on? Let us know in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed that video. Give it a thumbs up because it really helps us out. And if you want to see more, click on the red subscribe button down here or the circle up here. Check out our website or check out our Instagram. Links in the description below. And check out these videos over here. We think you might enjoy them. And we'll see you next time.